Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. You read the title right. I bought a used $9,000 engine for my SVT Lightning off of eBay Motors. And this is kind of a big mystery engine. It's got a big aftermarket supercharger on top. It's got exhaust. It's got some other stuff going on. Um, but I bought it from a junkyard from a wrecked Lightning. So it could be a really good deal. It could be an okay deal. Without further ado, let's do this. Let's just see what we have. I've had this thing for about a week now and I've been saving this for you guys. I gotta say, I'm pretty nervous right now. I'm excited as well. And basically what's going on here with the Lightning engine is we have rods that have been on a back order and I don't know when they're gonna come in. And I have a bunch of events that I need to do this fall with this truck and I need it to run. Here it is. <laughs> A 2.3 liter TVS supercharger. Oh man, when I saw this on eBay, I immediately was like, woo. So I bought this engine from a place called Big Cat Auto Salvage, and they did send me a video of it running. It was actually in the listing. But as we know, just because it ran and it seemed to run okay, doesn't really mean anything. This truck had a cracked piston and a blown head gasket, and I was driving it around for like 5,000 miles. So we have to inspect this engine, make sure it's a good one. And I'm gonna try, I don't know if we can do this, but I'm gonna try and just get it to run before we even put it on the frame and in the truck. Let's do it. So unlike a lot of engines from the junkyard, this one just wasn't cut out. They removed this one nicely and it has the belt on there and everything. So this is supposed to be like a complete drop-in ready type of engine. I think we just have to swap over the main engine harness. So obviously this has the aftermarket supercharger. It should have a larger throttle body. Oh yeah, that's the same one we have currently that came on the bad engine from the Lightning. Um, but this has the custom mid plate in order to fit this supercharger on this engine because it's not a direct fit supercharger or anything. But it looks like the tensioning system is stock. Uh, my Lightning had green top injectors, so those might be stock as well. Uh, the big question here is, is this a built engine? Is it a forged engine? We're not really sure, but we are definitely going to find out. Now they do clean these engines up, so it's kind of hard to tell the true condition. It looks like they cut this hose here though. Uh, no big deal, we have everything from the other engine, but uh, Okay, cool, let's keep going. So I was able to negotiate in a larger coolant tank for the intercooler system and an aftermarket dual fuel pump system, but this right here is kind of a mystery. It definitely looks like a cold air intake and they might've just thrown this in for me, which is really nice. What do we have? Oh, look at that. My truck already had a cold air intake, which was just a gigantic air filter. It didn't have an aftermarket mass airflow sensor, so that's kind of cool. I don't, want to, I don't want to ruin it with the razor knife. This is seriously wrapped up, man. This is crazy. Okay, so this is the Ford part right here. So it looks like we just got the mass airflow sensor and an air filter. Big Air Math Meters, SCT. They have airflow going this way and then their logo arrows going this way. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, here we go. I think the air filter I had was a little bit larger. What is that for? It looks like it'd be for an intake air temperature sensor or something, but that doesn't make any sense. It's right here. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't get the box or anything that this sits in if it sat in anything. So it'd be just like it was before where it's kind of sucking in air from under the engine compartment, but whatever, it was free. I want to keep this nice because I will be packaging up a lightning engine at some point and reselling it. It might be this one, but I'm not sure yet. We got to dig inside and see what's done to this thing. This will all make sense soon. I'll explain. Don't worry. I just want to see what we got. Is this a carpentry channel now? I think it is. This is how to disassemble wood with Alex. All right. There she is. 5.4 liter Triton. We have long tube headers. They included what looks to be high flow cats. Oh wait, no. <laughs> no, there's nothing in there. Okay. That means really high flow. Yeah, it means really high flow. <laughs> this is totally just like a fake pipe, isn't it? This isn't checking for anything, okay? We got EGR delete going on. Um, more emissions legal exhaust. These headers are pretty dented in. I don't think that happened in shipping. I wonder what was in the way. I mean, this is where the steering shaft goes, but you'd think they would have made the headers with that in mind? I don't know. Here's the intercooler tank. This is supposed to be for, so you have more volume and you can add ice to the system. Um, I don't know about this though. This is kind of beat up. 
Might just use the factory one. Okay, so this has 302 sensors. Yes, this is a wide band. Awesome. That's worth something. I want to see if this O2 sensor is in good shape. Yeah, we'll spray them all down. Some old Cree oil. This stuff works really well and it smells delicious. Let this sit for a couple minutes and bam. This stuff works so well. This guy's not in bad shape at all. This one looks a little crusty. Oh, no problem. O2 sensors are very expensive nowadays. I will definitely save these O2 sensors if we end up using the ones off the truck. I'll leave you guys a link for the Cree oil down below, but this stuff is great. See how it seeps in right to the threads? It's fantastic, big time saver. All right guys, so this engine came from a wrecked 2002 SVT Lightning with 128,000 miles on the odometer. This could have all been rebuilt for all we know. Obviously it's got the aftermarket supercharger kit, which is about a roughly $6,000 kit. So you have the blower, you have a $450 throttle body, this adapter to fit the blower. Uh, and then this mid plate is about $1,300 by itself. So there's a lot of good expensive stuff on this engine and stuff that I definitely want for my Lightning anyway. So that's why I kind of ponied up for this, even though I'm still building the original engine for the Lightning. So I just got the pistons in and what I'm waiting on now are the rods. So I'm gonna bring this over to the machine shop. They already have the block so they can get to work on that. But the rods have been on order for a couple of months and there's no ETA. I'm talking to machine shops that order 20 sets at a time and they're not even seeing them. So I don't know when I'm gonna get them and I need this Lightning to run in the next two weeks. It needs to be running and driving and this is where we're at. Bed, engine, cab, Peter, and frame. So the reason I have a two week deadline now is because eBay Motors has invited me and the Lightning to go on tour throughout the entire country. So this truck is gonna be on an eBay semi truck trailer and it's gonna go around to about 15 different car events, car shows, museums, auto shows, and it's gonna be shown to everybody. So it has to be done in literally two weeks. So basically this engine is kind of a placeholder just to get the lightning rolling for the next few months at all of these events. And then that'll give me time to build the other engine on the side. And then once I'm done, we'll swap over the entire blower kit to now the forged engine. We'll put the factory supercharger on this one and sell it right back on eBay. And that is the beauty of eBay Motors. You can find pretty much whatever you need for your project right on the eBay Motors app, which is a phenomenal phenomenal app. I find everything on there. They have a My Garage section so you can add in your car and then start searching for every part or accessory you may need like maybe you want a supercharger. You're not only going to get a ton of aftermarket and factory parts options but you can find supercharger rebuild kits, bypass valves, and everything related to boosting your specific car in one spot. Want a new stereo? You get about 10 billion options on the eBay Motors app and you can even find parts for your motorcycle or safety equipment if you're into any kind of motorsports. Basically everything is on the eBay Motors app and it's super easy to use. It saves me a ton of time. So go download the app and see for yourself. All right, so let's start ripping this engine apart. I wanna take these valve covers off and I wanna see what we're dealing with. Is this a built engine? Is it a stock engine? Is it in good condition? I'm crossing my fingers that it is so we're going to bore a scope compression test and then i think we can get this thing to run basically right here so we have the harness from the truck we got to go get the engine computer a battery we need to stick the transmission on the back for the starter and give it some fuel and i think we should be good oh and since i have to reinstall valve covers i might as well install these a subscriber named nathan reached out he's been following the build since last year and he offered to do this for me so these are coated he did the decals himself as well they look beautiful. So thank you so much, Nathan. I'm not sure if he does this as a business, but I'm gonna drop his social media stuff down below. Maybe you can reach out to him and see if he'll do it for you. But these look so, so good. Oh, and check it out. The guys also sent me the fuel sending unit out of the Lightning that had that motor with the bigger blower. And this is an upgraded unit. If you guys remember from the Audi rescue video, we had some fuel leaks coming from this Y area and that plastic piece from the factory fails. So this is an upgraded piece that won't leak and these are two Walboro fuel pumps and you definitely need more fuel with more air. So this is a nice little compliment to the engine. What'd you find? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, that's my emergency food. Did you say? November, 2021. That's still good. Okay. It's good forever. Did you say you found something that said Diablo Sport something? Yes, the ECU says Diablo Sport on it. Really? Peter's trying to get the engine computer out right now. 
so we can run this thing without installing the engine. Yeah, it's got a Diablo Sport sticker on it. I don't know what that means, but it's something. All right, well, Peter is removing the engine's computer. I'm gonna remove this valve cover. Oh, this is so nice with the engine out. These are actually kind of a beast to do with everything in the truck or in the cab. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? All right, we got head bolts. We got head bolts. It doesn't have studs, Peter. Yeah, okay. That's kind of our first sign of stock things to come, but I gotta say this cam looks really nice. So is there gonna be any scenario where there's forged internals and no studs? No. I mean, a dumb scenario. Like, you know, if you're gonna have the engine apart, you should definitely have done head studs or ARP head bolts at least if you're gonna forge the bottom end, but. Yeah, that doesn't say ARP on them. No, it doesn't. So we got Diablo. Okay, so they do tunes. They have handheld tunes and stuff. This looks like they maybe put a sticker on here to show that it's sealed, I guess. So maybe the previous owner told Diablo what they had done. They shipped out the computer and they tuned it. But uh, I think regardless, we'll be okay running this engine with this tune because this has what looks to be the exact same fuel injectors. So yeah, this definitely looks like a stock camshaft, stock head bolts and stock valve springs. Now I know what you're thinking, Alex, you're nuts for spending $9,000 on what's probably a stock 128,000 mile 5.4 liter Triton V8 engine. I mean, this truck has 85,000 miles on it and the engine was toast. Um, but hear me out, the reality of the world is that a totally stock engine with the stock supercharger sells for about $4,000 if it's in good running condition. So I spent nine on this, but I have at least $5,000 worth of aftermarket stuff, including the supercharger, that I'm gonna swap over to my forged engine. So once I do that, I could sell this off for about $3,500, $4,000, and I'm basically at like kind of a break even. So I know it's nuts. A lot of guys commented, why don't you do like a GT500 engine swap, something like that. Uh, those engines are not even that much more, like $10,000 for one with like 100,000 miles. Um, but there's a little bit more to that swap to get it to work in the Lightning. And again, I only have two weeks to get this truck completed and I really want it to make it to all these events. All right, I'm just gonna pop this back on temporarily while we remove all of the coils and take a look at the spark plugs and the amount of threads for the spark plugs in the cylinder head. If you guys watch some of the earlier videos, you know that in 2003, they went to an eight thread design for the spark plugs because they had issues with the spark plugs blowing out on the earlier engines because they only had four threads, which is really dumb. So this came from a 2002. My truck is a 2002 as well. So it should have the four threads, but my truck had the engine replaced by Ford in 2003. So it had the updated heads. So we'll see what we have here. And just like my engine, it also has random Excel coils which we will be replacing with factory ones. Because these supposedly fail a lot. You guys had all mentioned to get rid of these, they're junk. That's definitely what I'm gonna do. All right, so hopefully these are at least TR6 NGK plugs. Oh, wow, this thing was torqued in there pretty good. Because you wanna at least hope that they were running colder spark plugs with more boost and a bigger blower. Okay, that looks good right off the bat. TR6, all right, good job previous owner. This looks excellent. Wow, check this out, Peter, what is this? exposed gasket. What in the world is going on here? Okay, so here's the factory intake and this piece right here looks exactly the same as this piece right here. So is it a head difference? Because yeah. that's the cylinder head. What are these heads from, I guess? That makes no sense. Unless these are the 2002 heads and I have the 2003 heads on the old motor. So maybe, I don't know, Ford guys, let me know what's going on here. Here's our passenger side cylinder head. And it's got this whole situation here, just like this one. What in the world? And let's get these other plugs out. Another good one. And on my engine, everything was so crusty and nasty. Well, that's not the best in the world, but the plug itself looks good. It's not oily or anything, so I'm happy with that. And another good one. Hey, hang on, what is this? What is this? Did someone lose their 10 mil underneath the intake? Oh, no way. <laughs> What is it, what is it? It's a Craftsman nine mil. This thing does have some odd sizes to it. Like these are eights, the coils I think are like sevens. Uh, and here's a nine. So I guess I got an extra nine millimeter now. The running joke is that this is supposed to be a 10 millimeter. Leave it up to Ford to have something weird going on. Even with a lost socket. Oh, and we got we have an extra nut right here too. 
finding all sorts of stuff in here. Oh, looks like we have a newer-ish alternator. It's been triple tested with a phone number right on it. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily a good sign. Wait, what is, what's inside of here? <laughs> Peter, I'm signing stuff left and right, man. You should start a collection. What is this? What is going on? Oh. The belt? The belt. Huh, that's, that's great. This does look kind of weird on here. It doesn't have the proper rib belt for the blower but it does for all the other accessories. So that's probably just how it is, but I don't like this. All right, let's take a look inside of this cylinder. And yeah, we have a piston that's kind of far up in here. Uh, we'll check another one, but let's see. Can we tell anything with the threads? Yeah, not yet. Let's check another one. Okay, here we go. It definitely looks like a totally stock piston. Good cross hatching in the cylinders though. That's nice. And I think this time around, I'm going to look at these pistons very, very well. Because on the other engine, the very top of the piston at the edge, the ring land was broken off. So I'll go around and look at these. But yeah, overall, this looks pretty good. So I bore scoped the cylinders on that side. And now it is time to do the other side. And we're going to swap out this valve cover. And the driver's side is a little more difficult because we have this power steering bracket. But with the engine out, Everything is super easy. It's like someone did a valve cover gasket recently on this side. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Probably more of the same stock cams. Looks like they kept up on their oil changes for the most part. All right, we'll pop all these plugs out too. Man, we're definitely gonna torque our spark plugs back in. They're too tight, way too tight. Oh, that one wasn't. Okay, all right, let's pull out some more spark plugs. Looking good. And another good one. All right, let's see what's going on in here. And I do think these have four threads on the heads. Well, let's see though. Okay, another piston. All this stuff right here is from pulling the spark plug out. It's literally just dirt and sandy looking stuff. Yeah, that one looks good. And we'll go to another one. Yeah, now this piston's up at the top. I'm checking them all, but we're just kind of skipping around here. So this is the last one that we have. Good spark plug, a little crusty. And here we go, here's our valve that's open. All right, this piston looks good too. Well, let's move on. All right, so at first I was a little baffled as to why this complete engine didn't have a starter. And then I remember that the starter bolts up to the transmission. So I didn't get a trans with this engine. Uh, so we need to install our transmission just to test it out because I want to put power to this and try and run it. So we're literally using this as a starter bracket so right now. It's a 300 pound starter motor bracket. It's a starter motor bracket. We're not even putting the torque converter in or connecting it at all. This is all just for testing purposes. All right, so we're gonna remove the factory torque converter actually. We don't need it in here. We have a billet torque converter that we're gonna be installing. So me and Peter are gonna try and muscle this transmission on so we don't need any more weight for our little weak muscles. Peter, oh, speak for yourself. Help me, help me with your muscles. I got it. I'm just kidding. Just oh my god, no, I wasn't. That's really <laughs> heavy. Okay. Uh, you put it down this leaky way. Oh down. no! Ah! Have you ever done a torque converter before? I don't even know what a torque converter really does. The torque converter tends to convert like torque all the time and stuff. It loves to convert the torque. Um. All right, Peter. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah, sure. Something? Why not? Oh yeah. Oh, it's so strong. A bad aim. Oh my gosh. We got those net, the nail pins. Do we have all the tools prepared to zip these in or? Oh, probably not. Probably not. Okay. Let's play. Oh, yeah, it's in. Yeah, baby. Yay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Good job. All right, Peter, let's not get crazy. That's enough. Not too many, all right? Just the right amount. All right, so now we can install the starter motor. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bolt this guy in like so. Okay, so we're gonna do a compression test right now with the engine sitting on the pallet. So we have a battery from the Lightning and a jump pack, and we are all connected up here at the starter. And I got one of these cool starter buttons. This is meant literally just for this. So you don't have to go turn the key all the time when you're doing tests on your engine. We're just disconnecting the accessory drive belt so that it doesn't spin the power steering pump because I think there's fluid in the system and we just don't need it really spinning anything right now. And just because we're just gonna pop the one off the supercharger as well and just kind of let this crank just hang out and spin on its own. You're free of any parasitic loss. All right, so let's screw this guy in. All right, 
We good? We clear? We got oil. We checked the oil. It's there. All right, here we go. All right, cool. So this is a dry compression test. We haven't poured anything into the cylinders and uh, we're right around 165-ish, something like that. So we'll keep going. The most important thing is that they're all pretty equal. All right, here's another cylinder. Pretty much the same. All right, we're on the driver's side now. I've tested the other ones, but this is the last one on the driver's side and hopefully we're good. Oh yeah. All right, so we're getting the spark plugs back in because we are gonna get ready to fire this thing up. Peter is putting together our SVT lightning fuel system that we've used in a bunch of abandoned car videos lately and it's actually the one for the lightning. So this kind of makes sense. And we have the fuel lines and everything. This is our fuel tank. Now we have the factory fuel tank right there, but it's quite large and we just need a little bit of fuel right now. Oh, look at that. Purging the lines. Nice, all the air just came out. All right, cool. We got fuel in the rail, look at that. And in the last Coupe Quattro video, we actually had to make a repair right here because this was spewing fuel out, which may have been why the piston broke. It could have gone lean because there was a leak here for sure. So it's possible that with the previous owner, they didn't know this was leaking. I mean, why would you? And that's maybe why it broke the piston, possibly why it toasted the head gasket on the other motor as well. Who really knows? But it was odd because that engine ran great, literally with a cracked piston and the bad head gasket, that engine, you, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's actually quite scary because you could technically buy a used engine even after seeing a video of it running and not knowing 100% if it's really that good. So for you guys out there watching, definitely make sure if you buy a used engine that it's been inspected, compression test, the leak down test, possibly a boroscope, uh, and that it has a warranty. Getting a warranty on a used engine is very, very important. So, you know, just be careful out there. Okay, so with the fuel system figured out, I'm installing these valve covers. These are so cool. It looks so good. Wow. I can't wait to put these on the actual built engine that I'm gonna have. I'm also gonna have this repowder coated and it's just gonna overall just kind of match a little bit better. This is beautiful. Man, did he do a good job. All right, let's get this one on. Again, so easy with the engine out. I have the gun on the weakest setting. So these guns will snap these tiny bolts if you allow them to. Oh man, this is too cool. Look at these valve covers. Who's it powered by? I don't, I don't know. Oh, it's powered by SVT. That's it. And it's powered by this big blower as well. This just, this whole situation is just gigantic. All right, let's pop these coils back in and I got rid of the Excel and we went with a factory coil because we don't want any issues and I take your advice. You guys said get rid of the Excels and I listened. You see yellow coils on here anymore? I don't think so. All right guys, it's time to install our engine harness. So this is something we have to swap over from the old engine. It did not come with an engine harness, but that's kind of easy. Modern cars are easy with engine harnesses. They come off in gigantic chunks like this. So the other end is in the car. Click and injector and spark and fuel and spark. A little bit more fuel, a little bit more spark. And we'll top this off with some more fuel. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, we're good there. All right, guys, well, in hindsight, we didn't need to take the engine's computer out because we need to push this entire contraption under the cab because there's parts of the harness that stay with it. So the mass airflow sensor connector there, and then these big connectors right here. So it would take us more work to remove all of this stuff, and then we'll have to put it right back uh, than it would for us to move this on the most professional engine moving system known to man. We have this Costco dolly. We have a couple wheel dollies that are behind a completely destroyed pallet and then a furniture moving dolly right here with some carpet on it. This, this Not just any carpet. This is like 70s, 80s, like great carpet. Yeah, you need that kind of quality carpet for this. So uh, this should move, right? Well, kind of. Oh my gosh, this is great. We could not have done a better job at this. Perfect clearance. We have swiveling casters where it matters. This is beautiful. Uh, four wheel steering? Four wheel steer. So Peter, if this runs with the cab above it, is this a lightning? What makes a lightning? Well, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16, it's a 16 wheeler. It's a 16 wheeler, it's got a frame. It's got a truck 
body. It's got a truck body that says Lightning. And it's got a supercharger. And it's got a supercharger. I'd say this is a more of a Lightning than the bed and the frame by itself, right? Oh, and speaking of the frame, have you guys seen the frame restoration video? Look at this thing. Look at this. Our engine is going to live right here. All right, keep coming down, Peter. And this is getting a little ridiculous. We basically have to lower this almost all the way down in order for it to reach. But we just want to test this engine. We want to see it run before we go through all the extra work of putting it on the frame and reconnecting everything. We got to be 100%. And that's what 100% looks like. All right, guys, we have what we believe to be the essentials connected at this point, uh, just enough to hear this thing run. And of course, one of the essentials is putting the blower belt back on so we can hear that as well. Uh, the engine has oil, and we're just gonna run it for a very short amount of time just to make sure everything sounds good and, and we're good to put it on that. All right, guys, the Lightning's got electricity. Oh, that is a beautiful sound. And okay, let's turn on our fuel system. And we still have to have Peter here with the starter button. You ready, Peter? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Woo! Oh yeah, <laughs> it went right up. Wow, that fired up right away. That is loud. Wow. Open headers are, are definitely pretty loud. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> well, All right. Do you want to sit on the throttle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we barely have anything connected here. So I'm going to have to give it a little wee bit of throttle, I think. All right, whenever you're ready. Here we go. Fire the hole. Oh, this was sticking for some reason. Huh. Okay, try it again. Let's do it again. Oh, I almost got it. All right, we're going to try this one more time. I disconnected the mass airflow sensor. We just want to hear the blower. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, we got a little more. Do it again. Go again. All right, try it again. It wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally right next to the header. <laughs> I have noise canceling headphones, Peter. No, it's glorious. It's glorious. All right, go for it. All right, right in the hole. As I give it throttles when it dies. All right, start it up again and we'll let it run for a second. Oh, we can't give it throttle, guys. Here we go. Yeah, we're, uh, Peter and I have been here late trying to get this, uh, you know, tested. I, I want to go to bed, you know, knowing that we're at least going to be able to drive this Lightning, hopefully, very, very soon. Uh, and in the next video, we're actually going to, you know, do the thing and install it on the frame. And that, that is going to go parts. all that and there and that and all this. And I don't, let's turn the bomb off. All right, there's that. There's a lot. We got electric fans going on. We're going to install those, get rid of the clutch fan. And... Uh, Peter, I don't remember like where any of this stuff goes. I have no recollection. I, yeah, it's all gone. It's been like three months or four months or something like that. So in the next video of the Lightning, we're going to be installing the engine for real, getting it in the truck, and hopefully getting it to run and drive.
famous last words. I hope that happens in the next video. That's the plan. Um, and, then, uh, and then, yeah, and then throughout the winter, we'll be building up the other engines, so there'll be some videos on that as well. So plenty of Lightning content to come, and I'm going to drop the information of the shows that I'm going to be at with the Lightning. I'll just give you the whole list of everything if I can get it from eBay, uh, if you guys want to come out in your area and check the truck out for yourself. Uh, so with that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video.